All right, guys. Uh, today I got a 2008 Honda Civic EX to, uh, sedan or fucking coupe. I mean, uh, this car right here has got a R18A automatic transmission, four-cylinder car. Uh, picked up this car with a blowed-up motor in it. They had the oil changed, and they didn't tighten the damn drain plug, and it drained all the oil out of the engine and lock the engine up so what we got going on here is i picked up an uh an r18 swap the jdm imported from japan r18a motor and transmission i bought this thing off of ebay for about i think it was 1200 bucks and that was shipped uh I figured I might as well just go ahead and get the transmission. It was only a couple hundred bucks more since the old one has 200,000 miles on it. Why not, right? Makes sense. Plus, it's less work. You ain't got to swap transmissions over to the new engine. So, anyhow, I just got it off the uh, pallet, got it off the truck here. Trying to go over what's the, dip, the ma major differences so far with the uh, JDM version versus the uh, USDM one. It's my first time doing this swap on the newer uh our series engines uh first glance here they look the same you can't hardly tell them apart however uh let's see on the uh us transmission which is a spca we've got a looks to be a external or a, an external transmission cooler assembly right here um Whereas the JDM one doesn't have that. It has your traditional, I guess the cars in Japan had the transmission cooler that runs into the radiator, um, which obviously is not gonna work with, with this setup. So looks like I'm gonna have to swap over the uh, USDM transmission cooler onto this engine. Looks like it's gonna be pretty simple. I've got a few bolts off already. Looks like there's a little bracket back there. I gotta swap over, gotta take out, uh, Looks like these two bolts to put the bracket on and luckily there's already a hole right here for the other bolt. Um, also, I noticed the uh, at one of the water outlets on the JDM one, they got it routed. It goes up here to the uh, upper hose from the bottom hose and, the, and this elbows at a different angle. Whereas the USDM one, the, angle, the elbows down on a different angle so I might have to swap that out or see if I can get a pair of pliers on this one right here to try to bend it maybe I don't know how that's gonna work just yet um, let's see oh yeah this one also it appears that the exhaust manifolds are the same I mean it's got your EGR valve for the JDM one's got the EGR valve EGR tube same as the USDM one has so I might end up just using this uh, manifold. There ain't nothing wrong with it. Low miles, you know, maybe 50,000 miles on it. If it'll all bolt up right and everything. Depends on the O2 sensors, I guess, on these newer cars. I don't know if to throw a damn coat or something. Um, let's see here. It appears everything on the back side is the same. Your intake manifold on the JDM one is, it looks the same. It's got the bracket for the power steering line right here. It's got the brake booster uh, vacuum hose line right here. Um, I mean, it's the same as the, the USDM one, so I don't think I'm gonna have to change out the intake manifold. I mean, it's got all this stuff on it, just like the USDM one does. Fuel line, i have to take that off. That's a son of a bitch to take off in the car. Cause you know these these newer Civics, you can't get the shit on these back in the back side of these cars. Luckily, there ain't too much you got to take off. Uh, I read somewhere that you got to take uh, you got to use the, the USDM throttle body. Um, you got to use the throttle body that came on the car because it's uh, supposedly it's matched to the ECU. Uh, I don't know if that's true or not, but. I'm not going to take any risks because it's a pain in the ass to get to this when it's in the car. So I'm going to swap the USDM throttle body out for, take the JDM one off. 
I'm not taking no risks on that. I don't know if it'll work or not. I don't want to fool with it. Uh, they didn't even cut this wiring harness up. I could probably stick this wiring harness in this car and be fine. I ain't gonna worry about that though. It's um, let's see what else do we got here. Oh yeah, so this car, uh, this JDM engine, um, doesn't have a. I guess this car didn't have power steering in Japan because they just got a damn pulley on it back here where the power steering goes, and and they just got right here's the bolts where your power steering goes on the USDM one. So I'm gonna have to swap that out. Uh, and looks like I'm gonna have to swap out the, well, no, the crank pulley's the same. I ain't, might not have to worry about that. Maybe. Uh, if it's the same diameter anyway. Uh, let's see, what else do we got here? See, that's right here's where your power steering goes. That's a pain in the ass to get off on the car because it's on the back side. Um, let's see. All the mount brackets look the same. You got your, your one, your mail ends up here, and then your bolt goes in here. Same as on that one. Um, let's see. Let me check out this VTEC solenoid. Might have to swap this out or not. Got a three wire. And got a two wire on top of that. Let's see what we got over here. On the JDM one. Ah, we do gotta swap it out. Son of a bitch. So we only got a two wire on the JDM one. So yeah, it looks like these are gonna be the same if you go to put your JDM engine in, you gotta swap your VTEC solenoid over. USDM one's got an extra plug at the bottom, I guess it's pressure switch or something for the VTEC. Um, three, looks like a two tens and a 12. Make sure it's gonna be the same. Oh no. Uh, that's a totally different design, ain't it? Well, that might be interesting. Huh. Let's see. Oh yeah, it'll go. That's just the plug for it. Hell, I might be able to just screw that. That's a plug, so I might be able to just take that bolt out and plug in this pressure switch out here. Oh, I see how they got that. So we might try that instead of replace, instead of swapping out the whole sensor. Um, let's see what else we got here. Uh, I mean, everything else look, looks exactly the same on this car. Um, might have to, everything else looks the same. Um, let's see. Well, we'll see how it goes anyway. I'm gonna have to swap few things over I'm gonna swap that transmission cooler over uh, swap over that VTEC solenoid or at least the switch anyway for the bottom and I'm gonna do my throttle body swap that over and get my wiring harnesses swapped over too uh, so yeah I guess I would have to swap my harness over since this harness doesn't have the VTEC pressure switch or whatever on it anyways let's go over a little bit about how to get this motor out of this car uh i decided to get to try to put pull this motor out the top because i didn't feel like dropping the subframe because i don't have a lift and it's just a pain in the ass to do that so uh i couldn't really find any information online about how to pull the engines on these cars so i just winged it and luckily the motor does come out the top i mean obviously it's a little a tight of a fit but really all you got to do is take out i took off the dang um radiator support because luckily i seen that they these just uh, oh excuse me these just bolt in on this car these radiator supports kind of just bolt in they're not welded spot welded <laughs> so it makes it nice um so you just unbolt it i think there's one two three four uh so i guess there's eight eight bolts or so took the the hood latch loose 
and then just sat that over here and I pulled my radiator out. So that gave me about four or five more inches of clearance because with them fans and stuff there, you don't got room to do shit in this car. However, once I have all that removed, you got plenty of room to work with. Um, let's see. It is kind of tied up here at the cowling. It did, I did pop, pop them loose uh, to get it out, get the motor out of the car, but it, it came out fairly simply. You know, it wasn't, wasn't that bad at all. Left the air conditioning compressor lines hooked up. I didn't have to drain the damn my free arm. I just unbolted it and slid it back a little bit. Power steering pump, two bolts. Just let it dangle back there in the back. Uh, this car's got only three motor mounts. It's got obviously one up here and it connects to that, which I guess that's a whole passenger one. You got one at the bottom down here. And you got, of course, your driver's side mount, and that's it. Real easy to do. These cars ain't that bad to take motors out of. There's a lot of, they don't have as many vacuum lines or nothing. It's just all electronic. Makes it nice. Uh, let's see. Other than that, it's, it's been fairly simple. Uh, it's just a tight squeeze, you know, once you get the motor in or get the motor out, you know, it's working with a little bit of room there, but... Anyways, I'm gonna get get to work here and get this stuff swapped over and see if I run any more issues. I'll uh, follow up later on. All right, thanks.